JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFT's weekly market outlook webinar for the week June the 7th until June the 11th. I am Harold Amos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will describe the most important economic uh, releases and events on the financial agenda for the week ahead. But uh, before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read uh, the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, following last week's RBA monetary policy decision, this week the central bank torch will be passed uh, to the ECB and the Bank of Canada. We don't expect any change from uh, neither bank and thus, uh, if this is the case, the attention may fall on hints and clues with regards to their future plans. Investors may also pay extra attention to the US CPIs for May, where another surge in both the headline and core uh, inflation rates may increase speculation for the Fed to start scaling back its monetary policy support sooner than previously thought. But let's uh, take things uh, from the beginning. Today is a very light day with no top tier uh, indicators on the schedule. Therefore, market participants may focus on uh, US politics and the negotiations between Democrats and uh, Republicans over President Joe Biden's proposed uh, $1.7 trillion infrastructure deal. Expectations of uh, government spending on infrastructure has already added uh, fuel to the recent stock market rally, and thus it would be interesting uh, to see what uh, the outcome uh, could be. In our view, the large uh, stock gains uh, on expectations of a large government spending may have left stocks uh, vulnerable to a decent pull back in case the final decision does not point to such a big plan. Now on Tuesday, during the Asian session, we have Japan's final GDP for the first quarter, which is expected to be revised fractionally up to minus 1.2% quarter over quarter from minus 1.3%. Australia's NAB business survey for May is also coming out, but no forecast is currently available. During the EU trading, Germany's ZW survey for June is uh, due to be released. The current conditions index is forecast to have uh, risen to minus 28 from minus 40.1, while the expectations one is anticipated to have inched up to 85.3 from 84.4. Eurozone's final GDP for the first quarter is also coming out alongside the final employment change uh, for the quarter. As it is usually the case, the final prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Later in the day, we get Canada's uh, trade balance for April and the U.S. jolts job openings uh, for the same month. Canada's trade deficit um, is a, Canada's trade deficit is expected uh, is expected to have narrowed somewhat, while no forecast is available for the U.S. jolts uh, number. On Wednesday, the main event is likely to be the Bank of Canada interest rate decision. At its uh, latest uh, meeting, this uh, bank kept its benchmark interest rate unchanged at 0.25%, but decided to scale back its quantitative easing uh, purchases. Since then, both the headline and core CPI rates for the month of April surged, surged and although the GDP slowed in the first quarter of the year, the expansion accelerated notably in March. However, on Friday, the employment report for May showed that the unemployment rate ticked up to 8.2 from 8.1% and that the economy has lost uh, 68,000 uh, th six, six, excuse me, 68,000 uh, more jobs after losing 207.1,000 in April. Thus, although the spike in the CPIs and the decent GDP GDP data may dismiss questions as to whether the bank has acted correctly in scaling, bank, in scaling back its uh, bond purchases at the last gathering, the soft deployment report is unlikely to lead to more tapering at this uh, meeting. 
that said, an happy tone in the statement, hinting that further tapering may be in the works, uh, in the works for the months to come, may be enough to keep the loony on the front uh, foot for a while more. As for Wednesday's data releases, during the, the Asian session, we get China CPI and PPI for May, both of which are expected to have risen to 1.6 and 8.5% year over year, respectively, from 0.9 and 6.8%. Uh, Germany's trade balance for April is also coming out, and the forecast points to, points to some increase in the nation's uh, surplus. Now, on Thursday, the highlights are likely to be the ECMB policy decision and the US CPIs for May. Getting the ball rolling with the ECB, when they last met, officials uh, of this bank kept their policy settings untouched while uh, there was no much new material information in the statement accompanying the decision. What's more, according to sources, policymakers did not discuss plans uh, with regards to their, to their bond purchases at all. Since that meeting, though, a surge in inflation, especially in the US, has been the main theme for the financial markets, adding to speculation that the Fed may soon need to start scaling back its monetary policy support. In the Eurozone, headline inflation rose to 2% year over year, but the core rate increased only to 0.9% from 0.7%, adding some credence to the view that the spike in headline inflation may be due to transitory factors. With that in mind, investors may be looking for hints as to what are the bank's future plans in terms of monetary policy. Recently, ECG, ECB chief economist Philip Lane has pushed against the inflationist back narrative, adding that markets will take years to return to pre-crisis levels and that uh, stimulus is still needed to secure uh, the recovery. On top of that, ECB president Christine Lagarde said that it is essential that monetary and fiscal support are not withdrawn too soon. Therefore, we expect the governing council to keep its policy extra loose and avoid any, ta any tapering talks. On the contrary, there may be a debate on whether to prolong uh, their support and decision that will depend on how strong officials believe the economic recovery is, something that we will get clues on from the updated economic projections. Now, passing the ball to the US and its uh, CPIs for May, both the headline and core rates are expected to have climbed even higher to 4.7% and 3.4% year over year from 4.2% and 3% respectively. In contrast uh, to the Eurozone, here the search in the core rate, well above the Fed's uh, target of 2%, suggests that the inflation spike may not be due to transitory, due to transitory factors. Even the core PCE rate, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric, jumped to 3.1% in April from 1.9% year over year. With, se with several committee members already talking about the need to have a tapering uh, discussion in the upcoming meetings, this may increase speculation that the Fed will have to start normalizing its monetary policy sooner than previously thought and may result in a pullback in equity markets and other risk-linked assets. At the same time, the US dollar and other safe havens could come under buying interest. Now, finally, on Friday, GBP traders are likely to focus on the UK monthly GDP for April, as well as the industrial and manufacturing production rates for, uh, for the same month. While no forecasts are available for the GDP, both the IP and MP rates are expected to have declined 1.2 and 1.5% month over month from 5.8 and 2.1% respectively. That, th that said, this will send the year over year rates skyrocketing to 30.2% and 42%. In our view, decent data combined with a strong vaccination rollout pace in the UK may keep the pound relatively supported in the short run. However, the economic recovery in the UK is likely to face a real uh, test in uh, the coming weeks, as uh, there is likely to be a delay in the planned reopening due to concerns surrounding the new Delta coronavirus variant first detected in India. Later in the day, from the US, we get the preliminary University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index for June, with expe and expectations are for an increase to 84th from 82.9. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. 
I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.